Hello, this is Tom Pizzuti with Trading in the Mark. And for today, it's the 13th, thought we would take a look, uh, revisit crude. It's been a little while since we've looked at that and it's been playing out really well. It's pretty much my favorite chart at the moment. And next, um, gold, which has been interesting and probably my most controversial forecast, but nonetheless, one that I'm sticking to. So let's move on here. Starting with crude oil on a weekly chart. Let's get the little laser pointer out. And uh, we've been looking for this uh, move down from um, a few, uh, basically a month, a little over a month ago, two months ago maybe, um, to form a five wave uh, form. And uh, that has been working out. Uh, I, at first, I have to say that I was thinking that this might uh, turn into a um, an ending diagonal pattern, which would be a little bit different. So I was kind of concerned that this low, um, let's say a month ago, might be um, the low that would form a, a, a bigger retrace up. But that turned out not to be the case. Is This is taking a a conventional five wave pattern um, for an impulse, which is fine. So that means that we're going to have a, um, a five waves down for a wave one of something that will be, a, again, a, a conventional impulse. Um, how low this will go, um, yet to be determined. Um, I've kind of drawn this in as maybe the wave one might be the longest wave. That's I have to admit will be unusual. Usually wave one um, is, tends to be one of the shorter waves, wave three being the longest. We may end up getting some equality after this bounce. So we get a uh, settle low here in the, in the relatively near term, either in the next couple days, maybe tomorrow, um, uh, maybe today on Wednesday um, on the EIA number. Not sure, but soon I think get a bounce and then we'll see how deep this next leg becomes uh it would be typical for that leg to be maybe equal to the first leg so that might take it a little bit deeper than what I have it drawn here maybe down to um the 53 number get some kind of a bounce from that and then a another low to again to complete a five wave sequence for a um a three three five big correction from um, this last high uh, back here in 2022. And that would probably be a major low in crude, a uh, higher low from the all time, you know, the low from several years ago that, you know, actually took the futures down into negative numbers, but you know, we don't need to go there for now. But anyway, uh, this should be a uh, w should be working on a, a pretty major low. I'm not expecting it to be uh, very deep, but um, you know, again, time will tell. I'm kind of looking at this prior fourth as a as an interesting level, maybe just under that in kind of the 39 handle. Uh, you could make the case that you know this turns into being a very a a, a, a much deeper wave to We'll address that when we get there. You know, ask me in uh, a couple months. I'm sure we'll talk about it uh, by then, and we'll see how this is how this is playing out. But for right now, I think this move, this initial move, is in its last leg. So it's in uh, start expecting some kind of bounce. Let's move on to a daily chart. Um, on the daily chart, it's a little easier to see how I'm counting this down as um, five waves. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five for a wave three, um, a three wave bounce to a wave four, which is pretty much tested the top, maybe a little tiny little bit of, of overlap here intraday with the low of wave one. I think that is fine. Um, then a strong move down from that and I think this is one, two, three, four, and it's a five. And we're at the first uh, target of using wave one to wave five relationships right now. Uh, yes, there's always deeper targets, but uh, 
you know, I think we should uh, start paying attention right now and looking for a wave two bounce. Moving on to the intraday chart, we can see how we can zoom in. A couple things to notice here is that I could, we can make out a potential five waves down from this last bounce for a correction. That would be a wave four um, from the prior chart. So wave one, two, a one, two, three, four, five, four, three, and then a three wave bounce for four. And then something that's, you know, I'm going to say that's pretty difficult to count um, in this time frame, but it's a move down. We're at um, first supports at 68.30, um, worth watching, maybe 67.50 underneath that. We are already starting to see uh, a little bit of positive divergence here in the CCI. Um, less marked, but also in um, just a regular momentum indicator here. But nonetheless, um, this should be in the last uh, last few, you know, very very close to uh, setting low. The very very first confirmation of a reversal up would be. Um, uh, uh, CL breaking up above 60, 69.20. So watch that in the next, certainly today after the EIA number, and if not today, then tomorrow. I think, again, we're in a near-term kind of a reversal situation here, so keep an eye on that. All right, let's move on to gold. I'm going to get moving here. Gold, this is like I mentioned early, this is my most controversial forecast. I think everybody has been expecting, and you know, with some reason, I'm not going to say that there hasn't been, you know, the geopolitical situation has certainly been scary um, over the last couple of years. And whether that is, um, and you know, we had the um, COVID uh, kind of scare. That kind of shut everything down and made it look like things were going to get pretty scary. Um, we've also had um, some scares um, in the geopolitical arena with, um, you know, breakout of wars and such. And so uh, definitely there's been some reason for uh, people to um, move to have a kind of a flight to safety and to, uh, buy up gold, but I think really this is all too early. I, it goes back to the very large pattern that I think this was a B wave high and that we need to get a C wave move down from it. Now, the problem is, is that gold has been, it's a pretty ugly pattern, really. It's not as clear as what it could be. Um, I'm basing part of this analysis on, you know, these, uh, this uh, continuation chart in the futures. But you can, you know, people that look at um, a uh, a spot gold chart would see that, well, what about, you know, moving up to new highs or uh, maybe looking at a GLD chart, um, the gold ETF has a little bit different pattern, not as clean as not as clean as this. To me, this looks like um, um, a ending diagonal. Um, again, not the prettiest ending diagonal, but an ending diagonal nonetheless. And was looking for a um, reversal down from this retest or what I'm calling a B wave high, an A wave down, a little tiny mounts, a B wave low, three waves down from that, and then a five wave move up from that to set B. And that seems to be working out in that there's been a a very marked rejection, a very quick rejection of this uh, 2149.50 uh, resistance up here, um, a swift drop, and, and that's actually continuing. But again, somewhat like crude, I think this first wave down is um, a, about over with. And you could say that, well, gee, this pattern is somewhat similar to what you're looking in in, in uh, crude oil. and you know, crude and gold actually do have um, a pretty high correlation with each other, so uh, not surprising to see them kind of moving together here. In that work, that in both products, I'm looking for a, you know, low sometime. I don't know, late first 
probably more like set sometime in the second quarter of next year. We'll be looking for um, uh, lows in both of those uh, products and, uh, you know, commodities in general might put in a rally in the kind of the second half of next year. So again, moving on. We take a look here um, on the daily chart. It's think I find it interesting that we've uh, broken down through the daily moving averages. And I think that is um, indicative of being late in the first wave down. I would expect a wave two to pop up and retest that break. So retest the moving averages from underneath and then have another impulse down um, pretty much the first part of next year. And that should be pretty dramatic. And I want, I want this to feel like, I want it to have a feel of the bears finally giving up and having some capitulation. And so once we get into, um, you know, March, April, May of next year, I want the bears, I want um, the gold bugs to um, really kind of throw, throwing their hands up in the air and giving up and wondering, will, will gold ever have its day? And it will. Um, I am in the, in the, in the big picture, I think gold is going to be fine. Um, but in, over the next say six months, uh, can be soft. All right. Let's, next cycle inflection here is on the 15th though. I think we're getting close enough to that now that we're, I would say that we're in a cycle window that, um, the low could happen and, you know, at pretty much any time here and, uh, dropping down an intraday chart, kind of the kind of zoom in to kind of see a similar kind of pattern. So a one, two, three, four, and then out off of this four, looks like we have a one, two, um, sort of an extended third, um, a pop-up and a fourth and a fifth. Um, the making some measurements of wave two down to wave three, looking for five to be sort of equivalent or have some kind of uh, relationship to the third wave itself, we get some targets of 1988.50 and 1983.60. So we'll watch those uh, today. If if we do get um, another um, spike down, then uh, take a look at 1969.90. But I, you know, I wouldn't guarantee that we get this deep. Uh, I definitely think it should be should be watched now for again some kind of reversal, which makes sense because we also not only uh, for uh, for the case of crude we have the EIA number at 10:30, but um, we also have the FOMC today, and so obviously that will have a lot of impact on both um, the uh, interest rates and on currencies and gold is sort of you know, kind of a proxy currency. So definitely should take a look at uh, gold um, after the FOMC statement at uh, uh, 1400 or 2, 2 p.m. Eastern. And also keep in mind that a lot of the move um, sometimes happens during the uh, press conference and the press conference starts at um, 2.30 or 1430. So couldn't get a, a couple moves in the afternoon um, so definitely watch for volatility, um, this afternoon. And I think that will wrap it up. So hope everybody's having a good trading week. It's going to be an interesting day. Hope everybody's rested up and ready to go. Um, uh, this is probably going to be the, I'd say the most active like week, um, between, um, now and the next couple of days. And then after that, I think things start to start to wind down. Um, for the holiday season and into New Year's. So I don't, I would expect that we have, you know, some pretty interesting moves over the next couple of days and then things start to uh, start to mellow out and uh, the trading get to be a little bit more difficult next week and certainly uh, after that. So anyway, till next time.